Okay, lots of factorising and worked exam questions. These are all taken off high level question papers. They do start at a sort of grade D and C area to start with and then get harder. Factorising is all about finding factors, what things go into all the parts of the expression. Um, and essentially that means putting in a bracket. Now with these um, easy one mark questions, we're just looking for a single bracket. So we can just rewrite this question with a bracket, put this symbol here, and then try and figure out what goes into both the parts of the expression. First of all we look at the numbers. There is no number that goes into 4 and this should be 1 but we don't write the 1 there apart from 1 which is no use as a factor and then looking at the x and x squareds then we should be able to see that x goes into both of those. Now when I'm trying to figure out what goes in the bracket I'm thinking about what do I times this part by to get this when I multiply it out. So I'm doing the reverse. So what do I times by x to get 4x? I times by 4. And what do I times by x to get x squared? I times by x. And there we go. One mark. Uh, this time we've got a number factor, no letter factor, so we're looking at the numbers, we're trying to put the bracket in. Um, what goes into 8 and 20? What is the biggest number? So this is like find the highest common factor of these two numbers. And that is clearly 4. And that goes 2 times. But when I'm times in this, I've got two, 4 times 2y equals 8y, and 4 times 5 equals 20. Okay, um, here we've got a question with lots of different factors going on here. We've got a numbers and we've got letters. So let's do the numbers first. What goes into 12 and 6? Well, 6 does. Um, our brackets are going to be just a single bracket. Um, and what letters go into both of these? Well, there's no X in both, but there is a Y in both, so Y goes into both. What are times 6y to get 12xy squared? Well, that's times 6 by 2 to get 12. I need to times by an x to get an x in there, and I need to times by y to get y squared. And what are times 6y to get 6y? Well, that's just 1. Quite often people ask me, how do you know if it's a single bracket or a double bracket? Well, most of that comes from experience, and depending on where the, where the question is. If the question is early on in a higher paper, it's more likely to be a single bracket question. If it's later on, in the, in the middle of the paper, then it's probably just a simple quadratic. If it's later on, then it could be a difference of two squares, which we'll come to later. But here we've got, again, just a number factor. This time, 4. 4 times t is 4t. Got the minus there. 4 times 5 is 20. Uh, factorise fully. So we've got what goes into 10 and 15. That's 5. Um, what goes into q squared and q? That's q. What are times this by to get this? Well, 2 times 5 is 10, and q times q is q squared. 15, uh, 5 times 3 is 15, and q times r is qr. Okay, lots of these simple ones. What goes into 8 and 24? Always look for the biggest factor. Quite a common mistake here is just that I've used 2 or 4, but 8 goes into both of these. And 8 times t is 8t, 8 times 3 is 24. And another one of these uh, with both letters and numbers. This time the highest number that goes in is 4. We've got a y there. And 4 times 5 is 20. y times y is y squared. 4 times 2 is 8. x times y is xy. Okay, moving on now, going towards quadratics, so towards the middle of the exam paper. Quadratics are typified by three terms, a square term, a single term, and a number term. This is sort of an intermediate type question. We could consider this to be a quadratic by doing this, but there's no need to do that. With this, we can just see that t goes into t squared t times, and t goes into t once. Okay, the first of our quadratics. Like I said, we know it's a quadratic. It's got three terms, an x a square term, a single term, and a number. And that is typified by two brackets. To get the x squared term, we must have an x and an x. And then we're trying to think about what f numbers make this work. So this is all pluses, so that tells me that this is plus and this is plus. This number here tells me what I multiply to get. These two numbers multiply to give me this number. So I'm thinking of things that times to give me 20. So if I just run through all the multiples of 20, all the factors of 20, 
1 times 20, 2 times 10, 4 times 5, and then we need to figure out what these add up to give us. So 1 plus 20 is 21, 2 plus 10 is 12, and 4 plus 5 is 9. So that gives us the 9x. Just for this one, I'm just going to demonstrate this using a grid, just to remind you that what we're looking at here is the opposite of multiplying out um, a bracket. So if I multiply out a double bracket, for x plus 4 and x plus 5, I get x times x, which is x squared. I get 4 times x, which is 4x. I get 5 times x, which is 5x. And I get 4 times 5, which is 20. And that's how this is built up. I've got the x squared. I've got the 9x, which is 4x plus 5x, which is 9x. And I've got the 20. So that's the set of brackets that gives you this. Obviously, these brackets can be written either way around. So you have x plus 5 times x plus 4 as well. Okay, another one. So, uh, trying to think about factors. Again, it's all pluses, which is nice. We don't have to worry about any negative numbers. n squared, so it's n times n. What times 1 and 6 is uh, 6 and 2 and 3. So there's only two possible answers here. And 1 plus 6 is 7, and 2 plus 3 is 5, and we want 7, so we need to use the 1 and the 6. Okay, a little bit trickier with a number in front of the n squared, so now we can't use n and n. Because it's a prime number, it's 3, there is only one way of multiplying these two things to get 3n squared, and that is 3n times n. And then we've got to think of combinations that multiply to give us 4, so 1 and 4, and 2 and 2. Um, now, with this sort of thing, it probably would help to draw yourself a little grid and to think about all the possible combinations that works with this. And until you get experience in this, this is quite tricky to do just by looking at it. Okay, so if I just look at, uh, I'm going to take, take the 2 and the 2 first, just as an example. So if that was 2 and 2, 3n times n is 3n squared, 2n, and 2 times 3n is 6n, and 2 times 2 is 4. So I've got the 3n squared and the 4, but when I add these two together, I get 8n, and I want 7. So if I change that, uh, if I change that to there and that to there, that's going to change these two parts. So I'm just trying different combinations. The only other combination is one and four, but I could have the one here and the four here. That would give me one n, and three times four is twelve n. And that's going to be much too much. So maybe I should try it the other way around, the four and the one. So, have the 4 there and the 1 there. Now this time, 4 times n is 4n, 3n times 1 is 3n, and 4n plus 3n is the 7n. So that tells me it's got the, the 4 must go with the 3n, and the 1 must go with the n. So it is important which way around those two are. OK, we've got a much uh, trickier question here. This is, it does actually say solve, but uh, to do that we need to factorise it. So we're going to practice the factorising first, and then I'll just show you how to solve at the end. Um, so this is starting to get a little bit more, a lot more complicated because we've got two options here for the 9x squared. We could have 9x and x, or we could have 3x and x. So essentially, we've got to try lots of different variations until we get the right answer. And with 28, we've got 1 times 28, 2 times 14, and 4 times 7. Now I always when I'm trying to figure these things out, I tend to start with the two that are closest together and play around with those first. Um, for this one though, I'm just going to show you how the actual answer works, but really you've just got to play around with lots of different values until you get the right one and decide whether it's worth the three marks to get um, the actual answer out. So if I have 9x minus 7 and x plus 4 I get to 9x times x, which is the 9x squared, so that's OK. I've got the minus 7 times plus 4 is minus 28, so that's OK. So that's those two parts taken care of. Minus 7 times x is minus 7x, and 9 fours is 36x. And 36 take away 7 gives us the 29. So this is going to be our correct answer here to factorise. Just rub that bit out. Now, to actually just solve it, which is not part of these exams, top questions, but this one asks you to solve it 
this must equal to zero. Um, to make this double bracket equal to zero, either this bracket, the first bracket, is zero, and because these are times, this could be anything, doesn't matter what that is, that will give you zero. Or if this one is zero, it doesn't matter what that one is, that will also give us zero. So if I make this bracket zero, I've got 9x minus 7 equals zero. And then I add the 7 to get 9x equals 7. Then I divide by the 9 to get 7 over 9. So that's one answer. And the other answer is when x plus 4 equals 0. And that's much easier. x just equals minus 4. So if the perfect answer for this is uh, 7 over 9 or, or and minus 4. So this is the bit we're interested in the factorising here. OK, now, difference of two squares. Typically... How do you know this is a difference of two squares? Well, it's towards the end of the exam paper, if not the last question. Um, this is an AA star question. And you know it's a difference of two squares because you've got two squares and there's a subtraction. Now, the difference of two squares is essentially looking like this. So if I've got A squared minus B squared, it doesn't matter what A is or B. OK, now we're coming on to the last couple of questions. Typically, typically the last, if the questions are towards the end of the exam paper, they're going to be difference of two squares questions, uh, typified by this rule. If I've got something squared minus something else squared, that equals a plus b, a minus b. So that's the factorising. If I've got this written down, I can factorise like this. That's Towards the end of the exam paper, it doesn't just come as two letters squared. That's far too easy. So they put a number in here to make it more tricky. So 9m squared. If I think about 9m squared, that is actually 3m all squared. So if you like, this is our a squared. It gives us 9m squared. So if I've got 3m all squared minus k all squared, then that can be rewritten as this first bracket 3m plus the k and then 3m minus the k. And when you can spot these, they're really straightforward. And another one. Now this is much trickier. Um, when I first looked at this, I could see it's different two squares. But I started uh, square rooting the 3 and the 48 before I realised that if I just factorised out the 3 to start with, so if I rewrite this as 3 lots of x squared plus 16 uh, y squared, this is much easier to factorise because 16 is a square number. So if I just deal with this, x squared plus 16 y squared, that can be rewritten as x squared plus 4y all squared, because 4y times 4y is 16y squared. And there's my two a's and b's. So I've got x plus 4y and x minus 4y. And a 3 that I took out to start with, I just put on the front. So I get 3 lots of x plus 4y and x minus 4y. Fairly straightforward when you can see it, but until then it's very tricky.